you're thick or thin, rads are a water cooler's best friend. But just how much better of a friend is that thick rad? Well, today we're gonna see how much thickness really matters. Welcome to machines and more. They're not the flashiest component and they don't move, they don't light up, but a radiator's performance is key to any custom loop. And since it's the actual piece of hardware venting off heat carried by your coolant, this is a critically important decision. Now this is going to be a liquid cooling experiment. And the idea here is to try and understand just how much the thickness of a rad is a factor in overall performance. Now generally speaking, thicker radiators will yield more heat exchange surface area. That's just a given, there's more material here, and a thicker rad will also hold more coolant. These variables affect the performance of the radiator and can have a profound impact, not just on the thermals of your system, but also how your custom loop gets to those thermals. Now, thickness is often a factor that one has to work around based on what model of fans you want to run and how much space you have in your case, especially in SFF. So one thing I've always been curious about is what the real world difference is. I've got three rads here with three different thicknesses. They're not all from the same manufacturer, but all fairly good rads for their respective thicknesses. And one important thing to note is that the fin density will often be different. Uh, there is uh, definitely a difference here. Uh, this is something that manufacturers often will do to optimize each radiator when scaling up the thickness, and that is to balance the static pressure impact on your fan. This will reduce the impact that the thickness alone has, but I think including this variable is very much relevant to custom loop builders because that's what you're going to find on the market at each thickness. These are all 240 millimeter rads. This one is the 20 and a half millimeter thick XSPC TX240 with 22 fins per inch. This one's the 35 and a half millimeter XSPC EX240, 18 fins per inch. And I would have gone ahead and tested a 56 millimeter thick RX240 if I had one, but uh, what I had here was the uh, one of the better thick rads, the EK Classic P240. This one's 45 millimeters. And this one has 13 fins per inch, so a lot less dense here. And before we get into the data, I just wanted to cover the test setup. I am testing these rads in an actual built up case in the Cooler Master Enter 200, 18 liters. I just wanted to get an idea for the static pressure impact when the rad is actually used in a case and the rads will be mounted at the bottom for easy setup. Now I know, unfortunately, some of your builds actually look like this right now while you're waiting for a graphics card. Uh, this build is for you, right? Just left the card out for the easy changeover between rads and I'm just opting for the Intel i7-10700K at 5.0 gigahertz and 1.3 volts with the integrated graphics. Just under 180 watts total package power here at this level, and this is all running on the Gigabyte Z590i Aorus board. So for the pump, EK's Kinetic 120, DDC running at 40%, CPU block I'm going with is the Corsair Hydro X XC7, Fans are the Noctua NFA 12x25, locked at both 1200 and 1500 RPM on the rad um, for two different tests. And I also mounted these fans as a top exhaust, locked at 1200 RPM. Now these fans are exceedingly quiet and I think the 1500 RPM fan level will represent the higher end of what performance users that still want a silent system will choose. Uh, for all tests, everything was kept the same. Loop was drained, rad swapped out and filled back up with deionized water. I did have my son's help on fill bottle and power supply duty while doing the setup, so good job, buddy. So I'll share the testing data and then we'll wrap up with a few quick discussion points on the implications. Test done here was a repeated Cinebench R23 multi-core render, and the important metric to focus on here is the equilibrium coolant temp, which over 30 minutes does more or less arrive at a stabilization point. With fans set at 1200 RPM, the 45 millimeter PE240 does appear to have a slacker curve here. It does take a long time to arrive at a stable temp, which is about 0.7 degrees lower than the 35 and a half millimeter EX240. And that one is about a degree better than the ultra thin 20 and a half millimeter TX240. And the TX240 does have a steep curve, which would indicate that it increases in temp faster. With fans at the higher 1500 RPM level, there isn't a shakeup in the ordinal position for rad performance, but it does appear that the difference between the ultra thin and the medium rad does lessen. The PE240 is still as expected, still the best performer 
and at the higher fan speed, about a full degree better than the EX240, which is in turn a fraction of a degree better than the TX240. Coolant temps are a very telling metric for custom loops, but you might be curious, how does that translate to the CPU package temp? Well, with a 10700K, typically that delta is around 50 degrees C at 1.3 volts. There's gonna be more fluctuations on the measured CPU package temp, but let's focus on the final 100 seconds for 1200 RPM. We're seeing similar results from looking at the coolant temps. The CPU with the PE240 is about half a degree better than the EX240, and that is about one and a half degrees better than the TX240. At the higher fan speed, similar to what we saw with the coolant temps, the PE240 does result in better temps than the EX240 by about a degree or so, which is very close to the TX240. While doing the, this comparison, I also measured the amount of water that each rad holds while full. By weighing each rad empty and full, the capacity can be inferred. The TX240 holds 108 milliliters, the EX240 164 milliliters, and the PE240 232 milliliters. So from the data, clearly the thicker rad is gonna give you the better cooling performance, and you'd almost expect that. But with this controlled experiment, I think the gap from top to bottom is smaller than some might imagine. And for being more than twice as heavy when filled as the TX240, the thick PE240 does result in about one and a half degree of better coolant temps, which translates to two or so degrees better CPU temps for the 10700K. The higher fin density for the thinner rads does appear to help compensate effectively for the loss in thickness. That it takes longer to get to a stabilization point is something that works both ways. More coolant also means your coolant temps take longer to come down as well. So whether that is a benefit to your workload or whether you even care is very much a personal decision. Now in custom cooling, a degree or two is significant, but this isn't meant to be a competitive comparison necessarily. This information is just being presented here so that you're informed of the trade-offs involved. Obviously the thick rad is the best, but if you can't fit it into your build, that's not gonna do you a whole lot of good, right? With standard fans, this guy is 70 plus millimeters. And that kind of thickness is gonna be a challenge even outside of SFF sometimes. So if you need to run a thin rad like the TX240, I wouldn't say you're losing too much performance. I knew these rads were pretty good, but in a controlled comparison, these came in closer than I thought they would. And that's great news because these TX240 rads are so versatile for a variety of builds. So my last observation is the fan speed really does make a big difference. Despite these rads all featuring designs that will work well at low fan speeds, the great noise performance of the NFA 12x25s means that even if you have to set your system to peak at 1500 RPM, it will still be fairly quiet. So if you aren't already running the best fans that you can for your loop, look there. Uh, there's a lot of performance to be gained by simply upgrading your fans. The 300 RPM difference between the two sets of tests resulted in about a two, two and a half degree swing in coolant temp. So if you can get a fan that lets you run faster at the same noise level, you're gonna see a meaningful benefit without the compatibility considerations from rad thickness. So I hope you found this comparison helpful for your next build. Links down below for the goodies tested today. Give me a holler if you have a go-to rad. I'm curious, subscribe if you haven't already, and Thanks for checking in today.